if, if you were going to give a specific range, if your patient says, "Give me a range, doctor," what would you have told them? Yeah, I would. Uh, I would have said, uh, you know, Mr. Pullman, we're likely to have a situation where, you know, after surgery, you would have a a reasonable percentage chance of a, a temporary problem uh, that's going to last potentially a few weeks, uh, maybe into a few months. The risk of a permanent severe problem, uh, low single digit percentage. He goes beyond being an expert on the witness stand and almost channels himself as the physician speaking to the, the plaintiff. When he's talking to the jury, he says, I would say, Mr. Pullman, you have X, Y, and Z. These are the risks and benefits, X, Y, and Z, as if he is the doctor himself. And I thought that that really enhanced the credibility, really connected with what that, uh, what that testimony was. What are your thoughts on that? So you've got a great eye for that. So we're always looking for the tangibles and intangibles, things we can bring forth from our experts, from the simple things, um, eye contact with the jury, speak to them like you're, you know, you could be their physician, uh, avoiding, you know, jargon and terminology that, that's going to be over their head. But a very nice stylistic point that he did quite, quite naturally is just dropping into that physician's role. Because what is his ultimate role as an expert witness? It's to decide what a reasonable surgeon would or would not have done to Mr. Pullman, to the, to the plaintiff, what should have occurred. And he essentially steps literally into that role. And I think it really crystallizes it. And again, when that's done with knowing who he is, that's not just some paid expert showing up, that's, that's the expert on point for this surgery. Uh, I found that very, very compelling as well.